Tip number one is about calendars. Let's remember the purpose of Microsoft Project. It is a scheduling tool. And calendars are what help Microsoft Project to create an accurate schedule. By default, the standard calendar, which is used to schedule all new projects, has a Monday through Friday work schedule with the working hours from 8 a.m. to noon and 1 to 5 p.m., and there are no holidays listed on the calendar at all. So here's a best practice for you. I recommend that you add holidays, your company holidays, to the standard calendar, and I would recommend at least five years to make it worth your while. And then beyond this, I would also recommend you create additional base calendars as needed for any unique scheduling needs you might have. So let me flip right over to Microsoft Project, and I want to show you the calendars and how to set them up. I'm going to go to the Project ribbon and click Change Working Time, and here's the standard calendar. I want you to notice that I've already added a few company holidays in, but I want to show you two situations of adding holidays. The first one will be we need to get Thanksgiving Day added for those who are here in the United States. So that's going to be the fourth Thursday of November. So I'll go ahead and just type this down here, Thanksgiving Day. That'll mark one year as a holiday. Then I'll click the Details tab, come over here and say, let's make this a yearly recurring holiday. And it's going to occur the fourth Thursday of November every year. And then here's where I recommended that you can make five holidays. You can make more than that if you want, but I personally like to do five. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And bingo, I just created five Thanksgiving Day observances that can be used to schedule my projects. Now, here's another holiday that many companies get. It's the Friday after Thanksgiving, or we also call it in the US Black Friday. So I'm going to do the Friday after Thanksgiving, but I'm going to put the number 2015 on that and just create one observance of it. Now you're probably going to say, hey Dale, why don't you just make it the fourth Friday and, uh, of each year and then have it recur for five years and that would just take care of it. Folks, I don't think so. That isn't going to work. Now, let me show you why. I'm going to scroll real quickly to November of 2019, and this is what I wanted you to see. The fourth Thursday is the 28th, but the fourth Friday is the week before. So if you create those Friday after Thanksgiving occurrences, what I recommend you do is create them for each year individually. So you can see right here, if I wanted the Friday after Thanksgiving for November 2019, it actually would turn out to be the fifth Friday of the month. Now that's how to update the standard calendar. Next thing I wanted to show you is a few of the other calendars that I've actually created in my project just to show you how they can uh, address unique scheduling needs. I created a 4 by 10 work week calendar specifically for the resources in our organization that work a four day work week. They work 10 hours a day, Monday through Thursday, and they get every Friday off. So you can see the working hours up here, 7 a.m. to noon and 1 to 6 p.m. each working day. Beyond this, I've created a 7 by 8 work week calendar. This is to use whenever we need to fast track and schedule a task to be worked on seven days a week. It is not uncommon on projects that are slipping right at the end to try to catch up by going into seven day a week mode. Or if we have any unusual scheduling situation that needs to run seven days a week 
but only eight hours a day with humans assigned. For our Canadian team members, I've also created a Canada work schedule calendar, and we can see on the calendar that we have Canadian holidays that we don't have in the U.S., such as Victoria Day, for example. And then beyond this, I also created a special calendar called Weekend Work Only. And here you can see that, the ta that any uh, thing that would be scheduled using this calendar would have Saturdays and Sundays as working days, and the five days in the middle, Monday through Friday, are non-working time. In IT projects, there are some tasks that can only occur on a weekend, such as if we have to take down a server for replacement or upgrade. We do that on a weekend so it doesn't uh, disrupt business quite as much. So folks, that is tip number one for you. Now, to give you the heads up here as far as questions, I'm going to do three tips, then we'll pause for questions, then I'll do four tips, then we'll pause for questions, then two more, and we'll pause for questions, and then the final two. All right, so there we go. There's tip number one, calendars. All right, now let's get on with it. Tip number two, I recommend that you display the project summary task, also known as row zero or task zero, in every one of your projects. Now what is this project summary task? It's actually the highest level summary task in the entire project, what it displays for you automatically is worth two clicks to get it to show. And here's what you get to see. You get to see the current start date of the project and the current calculated finish date of your project. That's nice to know. You also can see on this project summary task the total duration, work, cost, and all variances for the entire project. You can actually see if the project is going late and over budget on work and cost very easily. No version of Microsoft Project, including the 2013 version, displays the project summary task by default. But you can change the default setting. So my recommended best practice is that you always display the project summary task in all of your projects. Now, it isn't hard, folks, to display the project summary task. Let's see me how many clicks it's going to take me here. I click the Format tab to display the Format ribbon. There's one click. And I go over to the far right end where I'll find a checkbox called Project Summary Task. I click it. Hey. There's two clicks, and that displays the project summary task for us. Now, I do want to tell you about a bug that is in Microsoft Project 20 that has not been fixed as it relates to the project summary task. If you try to rename the task name for row zero, the project summary task, it'll let you do it. When you save and close your project and reopen your project, it goes back to being the file name again. That is a known bug. It has not been fixed yet. So folks, that's how to display the project summary task. So here's where we would see the current start date for the project, and here's where we would see the current scheduled finish date for the project. But there's my second tip for you. That's a little bitty tiny one, but I think it's important to know for scheduling purposes.